Hello, my name is Jodie. This is a tutorial on how to protect roots in React. Uh, I looked at the React root to DOM example and found that uh, it was a bit complicated uh, to take to take in all at once, um, and that it's actually easier to understand if you build it up in stages, which is uh, what I'll do in this tutorial. Uh, there are some variations that I do to the example, uh, which I'll explain later. Uh, I'll show this process starting from a vanilla Create React app to show there's no magic. Uh, and once I've installed Create React app, I will uh, install the React Router DOM library. And then we can get started. Okay, so now that I've uh, installed Create React app, I'm going to go into the folder and uh, first of all install React Router DOM. I'll also uh, open up the file that I'm going to be editing. So it's just going to be the app JS top folder, uh, top file. Okay, uh, that's done. So let's start it up and see if it's working. So this should be the vanilla app that you get for uh, from every Create React app. So refresh, and there we go. That's as is. So I'm going to change this, uh, get bring rid of some of the uh, some of that boilerplate and replacing it with the bits from the example that they have. Um, it's maybe not going to be completely exact, but uh, it'll be close enough. So uh, they have a header section that uh, changes as you uh, log in a lot of they will come to that a bit later. They have a uh, navigation section that I'm writing now. Uh, so these are link tags which allow it to internally root in the app to different pages or different places. So, so the nav section appears on every page, uh, and then the this switch will switch between different matching routes and show only the route that matches. So these are pretty straightforward. Uh, so we set up our path that we want to show this page on. And we're just going to do uh, headings. Okay. Um, so uh, also to get the system, uh, the routing system working, we need a top level object, which is browser router. Oops, close tag. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to need to import all those symbols that I've used. So let's uh, browser router link root and uh, switch. Okay, I think that's it. Let's see if this runs. So at the moment, um, I'm not expecting uh, these to be protected at all. So both pages are perfectly accessible. Okay, 
So uh, what I'll start doing now is working on some of the plumbing to get this into the right state. Uh, state. So uh, we're going to protect um, this route here, the protected route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component which sort of behaves like uh, like root but is not quite so it's, I'm going to call it protected root and uh, define it up here and uh, I'm going to grab some props because uh, what I'm going to, going to do initially is just check that this works Uh, that the route is still working as is uh, after I've finished doing this. <clears throat> so, protect the page, still working, yeah. Okay, so now that we've shown that that's uh, working, um, I'm, we're now going to set up a variable to um, control whether the uh, route is protected or not. So this will actually protect the route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to here, and I'm going to create a variable called authenticated. And if it's true, uh, it's going to display the root. Otherwise, if it's false, we'll just send nothing for, this, for the moment. And we'll need to uh, pass authenticated in. So this is uh, hoisting it so that the other parts of the app can act as controllers for this variable. Uh, so I'll need to pass that in. I've also uh, had to rest the props uh, so that they get passed in properly. And I'll come down to here and I'll do authenticated. Uh, so if I set this to true initially, then we should expect to see uh, the protected page yeah, is still there. If I now set this to false, When we go to protected, it's not working, so we're not getting anything. Okay. So now what we'll do is uh, we'll take the control variable set up a bit further, and we will use a state managed variable to uh, act as this value. So I'm going to change this also to authenticated. And up at the top here, I'm going to use the state hook. And set up the, the value and the setter for it. Uh, and so the value that we did have down on line 31, uh, we can put here now uh, and show that that is working. So, oh, you say not defined yet. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this should be protecting the page. Yep. Yeah. And if we set this to true. Our protected page is visible again. Okay, so uh, the next stage we'll go through is uh, setting up and creating the login form. So we'll come up here and we'll create this as a new component. And it's going to look fairly basic as we will you must log in to view the page at uh, and they've got a variable path name which we'll have to define in a moment. Um, and 
then to find a button, which is the login button. Okay, so just for the moment, I will use a constant for a path name. And uh, what we also need is an action on the login. So that when you click on the button, it will set the authentication variable. Just on click equals. On login. And we will pass on login in. Again, because this is so that um, the, we're, we're sort of hoisting things so that the uh, app is able to, the, the main app loop is able to manage and control uh, the authenticated flag. Um, so uh, we'll need a root for, for this. And, uh, gonna put it on slash login. And I'll have to pass in that uh, method for logging in. Um, so this is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to call the uh, state set method to set authentication, and this will set it to true. OK, let's see if this works. So uh, what we should expect, uh, well, it's, it's nothing from here. Uh, this is still the same. However, if we go to slash login, We've now got a login page of a semicolon. Um, <laughs> okay, we've now got a, <laughs> we've now got a login page. Um, now, if I hit login, nothing seems to happen because um, we haven't set anything up yet. Um, and I think, yeah, the you state here is true, so we'll set that to false again. So, protected page is no longer visible. We can go to login, press the login button, go back to the protected page, and it's visible. So the mechanism is there, and it's still working. Um, so obviously, we need to tidy up the uh, switching between, and you know, d doing the redirection to the login form and then back again. So what happens is, is that someone comes in to the protected route uh, from the protected page, we want to redirect them to the login page at that point. So the protected route, we're going to change this action, which previously gave us nothing, and say, oh, go off to the login screen and uh, get logged in first. So that's pretty straightforward. Just let's go to slash login. Uh, and I'll need to add redirect to the import. Okay, so now if we switch, so now going to protect a page, we are now taken to login form. But if we hit login, we're not getting taken anywhere. Uh, if we go to the protected page, we are still being logged in though. So to do the redirection back, uh, we need to make some changes to the login form. So uh, at the moment, it will always um, show the login form. But what we want to do is for it to now act upon that authenticated flag so that uh, when the uh, when the person is logged in, this form says, well, you don't need to be here. So you can go off and be redirected back to where you came from. So uh, to, con to to gain access to the uh, lo location information uh, from the router routing, we can use a uh, an, ef uh, uh, an effect hook called uh, use location. So if I now add that into the login form, 
Location equals location, location. And now we can start filling in the path name, uh, which will help us to also see what's going on. So we will also do the authenticating. So as before, I've protected route, similar approach. We have an authenticated flag. Now, when this is true, this needs to do the redirect, and when it's false, we'll display the form. Um, here we'll do the redirect. And we'll send it back to path name. And we need to hoist get authentication from the properties and to pass authenticated into the login form. So very similar pattern to protected root. There we go. So let's see how this works now. So um, I'm at on slash login. So, um, but if we uh, switch to the protected page, you must log in to use a page at slash login. Uh, so if we hit login, uh, nothing's happened. Ah, but when we come to the protected page, it has. So what's going on then? Let's just look at that again. So uh, we've come to the protected page and it's forced us into slash login. We've then hit login and nothing's happened. But the reason is, is because we're still on slash login. So it's only when I then go to protected page that we're seeing what's going on. Uh, so the reason for this is this location is returning you the last route that matched, not the previous route, uh, which was the one that was before we got redirected to the login form. So it's basically, it's always going to tell you, oh, you, you're on slash login. So what we need to do uh, is to actually pass on some information from the original redirect. So this two variable can also be a an object. And uh, so it has a puff name argument, which is the original, uh, the normal two values that you would give. But you can set this extra variable state, which, um, oops, sorry, is an object. And we can put anything we like in here. I'll just make sure I've closed off all the brackets. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to set up a variable from. And this is going to be uh, the location that's come into protected root. So um, just for you, I could use, use location, but for brevity, I'm just going to use the props location uh, because it's there. And I'm going to grab the path name from it. So then it's just a question of using the path name uh, that, that we've passed in. So uh, back up in use location, uh, this will now have a state variable, which we can now access. So I'm going to change this to from so that the deconstruct works. Uh, but this time it's going to look at location.state. Now you might be wondering, oh, do I need to check that location is there? But I think use location is always going to send something back as long as you're within a um, root object or, or even actually under browser router, I would suspect. So I um, don't need to worry about checking for that. I'll uh, we'll then just change that through. So this is now going to be from. And this is going to be from. So let's see if that works. So public page is fine, go to protected, and it's now saying to log in you must view the site at slash protected, so it's picked up the right URL. So now we'll go hit the login button 
And yes, we've, we've come to our protective page. Uh, it's just one more little bit of mechanics. And uh, this is because uh, if I come to this from a different route, so let's say, for example, I come in and I hit the login page straight away. And bang, this has gone wrong. Uh, and the reason for that is because at this point, the state will have not been set. So it's undefined. So we do need to check that the state is OK. Uh, basically, if it's not defined, it's going to be a falsy value. So I'm going to use this little bit of syntax so to say do one thing or the other. And basically, if it's not there, we'll just simulate a response and give it a default location from which it will think it came from. So we're just going to use slash, which is usually uh, it's normally available. So if we do that, and so now if we come back to login, and yeah, you must log in to view the page at slash. So when we hit login, this is actually at the root of the site. Then we can hit protect the page, and it's there. But we haven't crashed, <laughs> which is the main thing. OK, uh, so that's the basics of the login system of logging in. So uh, the demo does go one step further and they work on doing the uh, on having a sign out system. Uh, we're going to make the this header section a bit more complicated. So I'm going to actually copy that for a moment and move it into a new method, a uh, new component. So uh, we'll call this uh, sign in header. So this is obviously for a particular state, um, and I'm sure you can guess what's coming up next. Uh, yeah, we will. We will uh, use the authenticated flag again to check on behavior. So uh, this will be the else part uh, that we have here. And uh, when you are logged in, instead you get a welcome message. Oh, gosh. Oh, oopsie, done slightly wrong because I can put header, because we can always return the header. We'll just do the middle bit with the authentication flag. Okay, you're not logged in, and let's oh, close the close the parentheses. All important. Uh, and if you are logged in, we get a message, welcome, and we get a button. And this button is the sign out button. And again, uh, buttons need actions, so. Uh, we're going to set up a, an action again to be hoisted, uh, to be hoisted out. So this is going to be um, on logout. So we'll need to make those variables available. And then we will now change this section to now say sign in header. And again, we'll need to pass in the authenticated flag and a logout method which uh, 
is just going to again set the authentication flag so that it's um, so that it's now false and therefore logging us out. Okay, let's give that a go. So public page as normal, you must log in. So now we've logged in, we get our welcome sign. Uh, we're in our protected page. And so then if we sign out, uh, again, it's come back and said, okay, you've been trying to access protected, but you're not logged in. So you've been redirected to the login form. Now, uh, you might be wondering why you don't need to have any redirections on the sign out. And essentially it's because at the point in which you're pressing this button, you are already on the intended route. So you don't really need to be sending anyone off. I mean, un unless you wanted to, of course. Um, so that's, uh, it, you know, it's not necessary. It's already going to know where to send you and things where, where you already are. Okay, so uh, that concludes the example. Um, so I spoke in the introduction about uh, there being some variations between the React Router DOM example and uh, my demonstration. So the first relates to uh, the redirect here. So they instead use uh, history.back, which uh, is a means to sort of uh, find the path by going back in the browser history. It will also remove the browser history entry, so it's maybe a little bit tidier, um, but it's, it does make a lot of functional difference. Um, the other variation is uh, down here where they use, um, they return the root straight and do the authenticated check within a random method uh, or prop um, as part of the root. So I think that's to create more consistency with um, externally so that you aren't swapping in and out different bits of the um, uh, uh, of the routing system. Um, but it comes at a cost because I think once you're inside that render function, you're then forced to, um, to be explicit about, because you are then in charge of rendering the route so you've either got to, you know, use just the render functions or the named component or the child components, and you've got to sort of stick to it from the root. Um, so that, that I feel is a limitation. I've kept it simple here and just gone for the most flexible option uh, to kind of just get you started. <laughs> so I hope this has, this has been uh, informative and useful. Um, I will link to this code in the description. Um, so thanks for listening and goodbye.